and to Chairman Albus. I'm here to testify um, on Senate Bill 228, which is actually um, a not concerning damages to unlawful killing of injured animals, but the part I'm speaking about is the um, shelter and tethering part of the bill. As you can remember, we passed several years ago um, uh, changes with uh, Representative Auden Grogan's to the shelter tethering bill um, in our state of Connecticut. But there's some holes still in this bill, and it's evidenced actually by um, the amount of feedback I personally get from people from actually across the state. And maybe it's because I'm a well-known animal advocate in the legislature that I am lucky enough to receive Facebook messages and emails from literally every corner of the state from people telling me about instances time and time again of animals being uh, left outside in what any one of us would consider an inhumane situation. So the law that we currently says that we can't tether an animal, right, um, a certain amount, has to, have, it has to have adequate shelter. But I will actually get pictures from, from people across the state of neighbors or somewhere they drive by where an animal is in a sort of uh, five by three metal cage outside, you know, a tarp that's blowing in the wind when it's pouring monsoon rain, like monsoon condition rain, horribly freezing cold temperatures, burning hot 90, 100 degree temperatures. People will write to me that there are dogs being left outside, and it's always dogs um, that are being left outside in these conditions 24-7. And, you know, most of us would say to ourselves, why have a dog? I mean, what is the purpose of you having a domestic animal if you're never, ever going to socialize it, spend any time with it, and especially subject it to cruel and unusual conditions? I mean, frankly, the dog would be better off in a shelter, an animal, a municipal animal shelter, than being exposed to these kinds of conditions. And ACOs, through the Humane Task Force, um, and also through uh, writing to me, have said that they are in a tough position because many times they go out and then there's an argument about the statute. And they keep saying to me, the statute doesn't allow me to go after this person, to seize this animal. And they should have that tool in their toolbox. They are intelligent people who understand cruelty when they see it. And they can see when an animal doesn't have access to water, who is being left out in these conditions 24-7. It, it just, it gives them the opportunity to do the right thing. Something any one of us would do, any one of us would do to protect something that simply can't protect itself. A dog can't say, I'm freezing, I'm sweating, I'm, I, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I'm cold. But we should be able to do that as a state. So I'm asking that the language, and I attached um, a list of bullet points from the ASPCA, and I know that Deb Bresch is, uh, has submitted testimony as well, that we were looking for um, to be included. And I understand it's a lot of technical language and, and such, but I'm hoping that we can do the right thing because, I mean, I, I just think, you know, just think about how cold it was a couple, you know, like for a few weeks this winter. Just think about being outside all night in that kind of condition when you're a domestic animal with no shelter and it, it's just not the right thing to do. So I hope you'll take it under consideration. Thank you, Representative. <clears throat> 